Hi everyone, it's Scott. Welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100. Um, I do the Thursday videos uh, on this channel. My uh, YouTube uh, username is Cineram. Uh, and uh, we're doing a theme this week on Rosario Dawson. Unfortunately, it's been kind of a desolate week here. We haven't uh, had a lot of uh, reviews of Rosario Dawson films uh, so far. Um, we did, however, do a live chat on Saturday. We ran about an hour and a half. There was four of us here on the channel all having a conversation about films and World Cup and other uh, things of that nature. Um, so that's uh, on the channel if you want to take a look at it. <clears throat> um, Rosario Dawson um, is someone who I first saw in the movie Kids from 1995. She um, played Chloe Sevigny's best friend. Chloe Sevigny uh, is a teenager living in New York City, and she finds out that um, despite the fact that she only had sex with one person, she contracted HIV, and so she's running all over the city looking for the kid to tell him that, uh, that he's got HIV too. And I don't really remember a lot about Rosario Dawson from the film, but uh, that was the first time I saw her or anything like that. And since then, she's uh, worked with Spike Lee a couple of times. Uh, she was um, the main character's girlfriend in He Got Game, uh, and then she appeared in 2002, she appeared uh, as Edward Norton's girlfriend in uh, The 25th Hour. And this is a movie that I hadn't seen since it was in the theaters, so I wanted to give it another look. Um, the movie was is based on a novel by a guy named uh, David Benioff. I think that's how you pronounce his name, Benioff. Um, and he also wrote the screenplay for the film as well, and Spike Lee directed the film. Um, it's set in New York City, just like kids, um, and it was shot pretty pretty quickly after uh, September 11 in 2001. Um, and there's actually uh, footage of the uh, um, the site, basically, Ground Zero, um, because one of the main characters, Barry Pepper, um, lives in an apartment that overlooks the uh, the site itself. You can see, you know, construction cranes and what have you just out of sight of his window amongst the wreckage. Um, he uh, is talking with Philip Seymour Hoffman, who's also, uh, you know, plays a, an important character in the movie, uh, about the fact that uh, he doesn't want to give up his apartment, you know, uh, and uh, he, um, for whatever reason, he wants to stay there and, and just feels like, you know, selling his place or, or, or moving out, moving somewhere else away from it would just be, you know, uh, showing weakness. Um, and he's a stock trader. He's not uh, not a big fan of weakness. He's uh, he likes uh, bold moves. Um, they're not the main characters, though. The main character is Edward Norton, um, who's a drug dealer, um, who, who was a drug dealer working for some Russian gangsters. And uh, he got pinched um, with a big supply of illegal substances um, hidden in his couch along with some cash. And so he got convicted uh, and is going to be spending uh, seven years in prison. And everyone is really, really unhappy about that. Um, <laughs> his girlfriend and his friends especially, but of course Edward Norton just knows that he's going to be in a huge amount of trouble once he gets in there. You know, he's a skinny white guy, he just doesn't have uh, a lot of uh, intimidation factor, unfortunately. And uh, um, one of the things that uh, that uh, that Barry Pepper, um, his stock trader friend, says is just like, it just, you know, he doesn't have a lot of options. You know, he can either run and try and avoid the law, you know, and try to avoid being recaptured, or he can kill himself, or he can do what they want and go to prison, in which case we're never going to see him again, you know, he's, he's probably going to get killed in there pretty quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the just, there aren't any good options for him at this point. <laughs> um, Philip Seymour Hoffman wants him to be a little bit more uh, optimistic. Uh, but he, you know, uh, Barry Pepper's a, a realist, and he really doesn't uh, think that uh, Norton stands much of a chance. Um, Rosario Dawson is a girl named Naturel, um, who Edward Norton met while she was still in high school. She was like 18 at the time, and so they've been in a relationship for a few years now. Um, and uh, she's, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, made some good money uh, dealing heroin and things like that, and so she's, uh, she's in, uh, you know, enjoyed his lifestyle. And one of the things that Barry Pepper's a bit suspicious of is the fact that, uh, that uh, if he, uh, when he goes to prison, she'll basically end up at his place and reap the benefits of his lifestyle, and he's very suspicious of her. There's this question of exactly who it was that ratted him out, because the cops, when they got to his apartment, when they first searched the place, they knew exactly where the stuff was. They knew exactly where to look. And so all signs point to someone having betrayed Edward Norton, someone who knows exactly where he would have put uh, the stuff, uh, the illegal stuff, um, in his home. Um, 
And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, Brian Cox is also in this movie, he plays Edward Norton's father. Um, and he has a couple of scenes. Uh, Anna Paquin is also in this movie. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's a uh, high school teacher, and Anna Paquin's dressed very flirty and is always like sort of hitting on him and, and, uh, and just, you know, acting in a very tempting way. Um, and the guys are like, look, man, you need to steer clear of that. Really, you do, okay? You get a huge amount of trouble. That storyline um, um, continues as Anna Paquin shows up at the club that they're... Uh, basically, it's like Edward Norton's Last Night of Freedom. And so they go to a, a club, basically, a dance club, and sit in the VIP area, and she convinces them to bring them along, and, and you know, we're all just like, this is a lot of trouble. I'm not really sure why this storyline was in the movie. It doesn't really seem to serve um, the story all that much. Not that every single plot line has to be directly related to Edward Norton in some way, but it just, um, I don't know, it just it just didn't seem to fit in with the rest of it. Um, but uh, but everything else about the movie is really good. Um, one issue I have with Spike Lee is that he puts music in the background of every single scene, no matter what's happening. And the scene where uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman and Barry Pepper are talking in Barry Pepper's apartment, I felt could have played silent. Uh, or without background music, what I mean, uh, rather than have that that constant music uh, uh, going on in the background, it's just not a not not my favorite thing in the world. I prefer some scenes a little bit quieter. Um, but overall, it's a really good movie. Um, there's a kind of a direct callback to Spike Lee's movie, Do the Right Thing. Um, there's a scene where Edward Norton um, is having lunch with his father, and he goes to the bathroom and basically screams into the mirror, or at least in his head, he's screaming to the mirror about all the different types of people in New York City, all the different ethnic groups and the different types of uh, people. Uh, and he just is like saying, basically, screw them all. A little bit more harsh than that, but basically, screw them all. And that's sort of reminiscent of a scene in Do the Right Thing, where you have all the different ethnic groups in the uh, bed uh, stuyvesant neighborhood, uh, basically uh, uh, ripping on all the other groups uh, in the neighborhood. Um, very similar to that scene. Um, and at the end of the movie, I'm not going to, you know, spoil a lot of stuff right here, kind of because there isn't uh, the capabilities to have spoilers in a film like this, um, because the conclusion is kind of left ambiguous. As Brian Cox is driving his son to prison uh, the morning that he's supposed to turn himself in, he says, if you want, I'll just make a left here and we can just keep on going west, not go to the prison. It's like, what are you talking about? It's just like, well, you know, I mean, you know, you know, it's prison's not going to be pleasant for you, and you do have the option of running if you want to, if you're smart about this. He says we could travel to some town out in the middle of, uh, you know, the, the the flyover zone, you know, somewhere in the Midwest or maybe in Texas, something like that, where you can find a job working for cash, you know, and 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 change your name and what have you. Maybe find a guy to give you false papers and and just sort of, and then over time maybe you can invite you know Rosario Dawson to to join you and you can have a family there sort of on the down low rather than turning yourself in. We have that choice if you want to. But it's, it's, the movie ends before any of that happens, before you see exactly what choice he makes. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's a really interesting movie. Um, I like a lot, and uh, Rosario Dawson's an actress who I like quite a bit. You know, she's just got this brilliant smile. I love it every time she smiles, and she's, she's really good at what she does. Um, I've seen her in a bunch of stuff over the years. Um, but uh, this is probably one of the better movies that I've seen her in. I couldn't really pick a favorite performance or a favorite uh, a movie of hers that she's been in because it's not like I religiously follow her career, but she's been in a lot of stuff, and uh, she's real good, and she's gorgeous, of course, as well. Um, we've got a new theme, um, of course, starting tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll have some guys, uh, a few more videos, a few more review videos um, for next theme, but that will start tomorrow. So please subscribe to our channel on YouTube if you haven't already. And if you check the link uh, in the description below, that's to our Facebook page. You can suggest other actors or actresses for us to focus on for a theme. Um, thanks very much for watching. See you again real soon. Bye.